여러분 큰 박수로 환영해 주시기 바랍니다. All right, good morning, everyone. Actually, uh, first, thanks a lot to AITA for inviting us and like for such an invaluable opportunity to share our, uh, share our understanding with market participants. Uh, I'm Young from ICS German office, and the topic I will be discussing today is uh, price forecasting in carbon markets. Uh, to be honest with you, I spent more than eight months to understand this topic, so I don't really think 15 minutes of presentation would make you have a complete understanding of this issue. However, I can still help you to start your own price forecasting by explaining to you where you've got to look at and which factors you've got to consider for price forecasting. Yeah. Uh, in this regard, I will start, um, I will begin with uh, the clear explanation on total demand and total supply in carbon markets. And then I will say, like, the net, net balance between total supply and total demand doesn't really say much about the price forecasting and the price development. Then uh, I would say, like, I, I, then I will cover those issues and those topics that are relevant and that have a very significant impact on price movement. And then I will give you a brief interpretation of current market situation of Korean ETS from our perspective, from ISIS perspective. Uh, before we kickstart the presentation, I will briefly give you a brief introduction to ourselves. ISIS is a part of Vidal Sphere, that is one of the biggest information providers in the world. It's, and ISIS carbon team has 25 carbon market analysts and six uh, carbon market journalists who are looking exclusively at carbon markets. And we provide market intelligence to our customers, uh, which includes uh, price information, price forecasting, and other relevant market information. So, uh, actually the starting point of forecasting is to understand the total, deploy, uh, total demand and supply. By saying total demand, I meant uh, the expected emissions from covered entities uh, from 2015 to 2017 for the first compliance period. And then by saying total supply, I meant the sum of the actual allocation volume and potential allocation volume from reserve. But it's getting more complicated if you look at the breakdown of those values. There is another, uh, there is additional stream of supply from offsets. So uh, in, in this case, I just took 10%, like just for the simplicity of expected emissions, because that's the cap, the maximum volume we can use in South Korean ETS as an offset credit. And for the demand forecasting, you've got to consider each industry's loads and activities, and then you've got to convert that into emissions volume. Then you can figure that out, but that takes quite a lot of time. So, just, just let's look at the sky blue columns. So, that's the balance we expect. And that balance, the sky blue columns, is balance between the expected demand and expected supply, including the, off, uh, the maximum offset provision. In that case, we have such a development. There is, there is going to be a net oversupply in 2015 and net undersupply in 2016 and that oversupply in 2017. Is there anyone who can say how the price should develop for the next three years? Any volunteer? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, many people say, well, there would be a very lack of trading in 2015 and the price would really go up in 2016 while the price was very low in 2015 and 2017. That's, that's mostly what we've heard from market participants, but actually, that's not. And we will, from this moment, I will explain to you where you've got to look at other than fundamental balances, which I just discussed and which I just explained. Uh, carbon market is quite different. You've got to look at behavioral patterns and timing of uh, market participants. 
in general, there are two main behaviors of market participants. One is rather long than short position. Companies prefer to have long position, uh, which means they hold, uh, they tend to hold more allowances than their expected short position. So at the end, they are left with more allowances. And the second behavior is hedging behavior from utility companies, which is power producers, I'll say. And due to those, uh, the driver, drivers of those two main behavior, like the first one, rather than rather long than short behavior, the driver for that behavior is actually uh, because companies tend to bank and and they they sell. They sell after they submit the allowances in the next compliance year. And, and the main driver actually is the accounting standards, which penalizes the short position by the end of accounting period, which create uh, read a significant earnings volatility. Because they've got to, by the end of the year, companies have to recognize the emissions costs and emissions liability at the market price of allowances. And if they have short position by the, account at, by the end of accounting period, they've got to record the emissions cost with the cur uh, with then market price, which might be significantly high. So they tend to cover that position only. And because of that, and, and also, yeah, I just missed one point. Actually. Uh, those utility companies, because they get compensated in wholesale power market, not in South Korea, but in general, uh, generation companies, they do get compensated for their emissions cost because emissions cost is an incremental cost of generation, so it's included in the variable cost, but in South Korea it's not the case, but I will discuss that later. Mm. So those power companies, they mostly align their allowance procurement timing with fuel purchase timing, so they purchase uh, some portion of like allowances earlier aligning the timing with the fuel, uh, fuel procurement or fuel consumption timing. So that's actually the time when demand comes into the market, not actually the timing when the actual generation takes place. So in the end, so demand normally comes earlier than the supply. Uh, it's quite complicated actually. Mm. If you look at the highlighted area, uh, the fundamental T, that's actually the expected short position and expected emissions of um, several different industries. So at first, let's look at the deep blue column. So that's the expected short position of utility companies by the time T. So they do have a plan to generate certain volume of electricity by time T, but if you look at time t minus uh, t minus four, they began covering up their short position gradually. So by time t, they only purchased less than one fifth of actual short position. And as you can see, the demand didn't really take place at time t, but that rather took place throughout the year, throughout time. I didn't say T is the year, but T could be months, or T could be quarter, or T could be yeah, five years. But anyways, that doesn't really happen by the time the actual emission takes place. So that's the key point. And if you look at the industry, uh, the blue column, uh, the sky blue column, which is the expected short position of industries. So they also, uh, they, they do buy allowances just before the emission, uh, the allowance emission, but they bank from the next year. So rather than, yeah. And also if you look at the long position industries, which is the one with gray column in time T in the highlighted area, that's actually the expected long position of some industry or companies. But they didn't really sell the allowances in, t, uh, in time T minus four, T minus three, T minus two, T minus one, but they just sold the Mm, some of their remaining volumes by the compliance year, uh, by the end of the compliance year. So the demand comes earlier, while supply comes far later. So there we have timing imbalance. Mm. 
여기서부터는 어, 한국말로 설명을 드리는 게더 나을 것 같아요. 그래서 여기서 보시면 음, 제가 예, 이제, 이제 한국, 한국 배출권 거래제 관련해서는 일단 그 지금 현재 가격이 만 100원에 묶여 있잖아요. 근데 어, 그거는 일단 현재 이제 아까 이전에 말씀드렸듯이 발전 이제 도매 발전 부분에서 이제 배출 비용이 이제 그 배출 비용은 이제 KPX에서 산정이 되잖아요. 비용평가위원회에서요. 근데 그 비용에 배출 원가가 포함이 안 되어 있습니다. 그래서 배, 이제 발전사들이 이제 이제 얼마만큼의 발전을 할지로 입찰을 하게 되고 발전 비용은 이제 현재 발전 원가를 포함하지 않기 때문에 그 비용이 그 비용이 그 가격으로 넘어가지 않게 되는 거죠. 그래서 모멘텀이 약, 약하게 돼서 발전사들이 지금 이제 크게 구매하려고 하지 않는다고 저희는 보고 있어요. 이제 실제 이제 예상하는 수요는 많은데 비해서 현재 아직 그게 클리어하게 나온 게 없기 때문에 아직 그 구매를 하지 않고 있다고 보고 있는 거고요. 그리고 이제 서플라이 입장에서는 이제 현재 그 이제 기준 가격이 만 원이잖아요. 그렇기 때문에 기준 가격이 만 원이라는 거는 이제 가격이 계속 만 원이라는 얘기가 아니라 그만 원이 이제 3개월 기, 평균 가격이 만 원이 되게 되면 어 이제 시장 안정화 조치가 취해질 수 있고 그리고, 그리고 이제 그 정부에서 그 최고 벌금을 3만 원 이하로 낮추기 위해서 그런 만 원을 책정해 놓은 거기 때문에 이제 기업 입장에서 이제 롱 포지션이 그러니까 이제 배출권이 남는 기업 입장에서는 좀더 높은 가격을 요구하게 되는 거죠. 지금 이제 시장이 부족하다는 걸 알고 있으니까요. 그러니까 그렇게 예상을 하고 있으니까 좀더 높은 가격을 부르는데 이제 가장 이제 수요가 높을 거라고 예상되는 발전사에서는 아직 비용 이제 발전 비용 그러니까 배출 비용의 발전 비용에 아직 안 들어가 있기 때문에 그게 이제 잘안 들어가게 되는 거죠. 그래서 그게 이제 해결이 되면 음, 저희 측에서는 이제 발전사 측에서 좀더 본격적으로 이제 그 시장에 참여할 거라고 예상을 하고 있습니다.